a flying car with cycloidal rotors. I think what we should do, Blunty, is just play this video because everyone kept forwarding me this video. Uh, and then you've got some uh, some history and background. So let me let me bring up this video though. Um, music is ridiculous. What's that? The music is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I have the music muted. Okay, cool. It says the music is ridiculous. So, this is all like super dramatic, like. What the frick? Like a belt drive. So what are we looking at here, Blunty? What are these cycloidal rotors? Yeah, so basically, yeah, this is this idea. It's called cycloidal rotors. And uh, we'll look at it just in a second where we looked at it before on the news. But basically, the idea is that you've got these spinning rotors. And these spinning rotors have these veins, these uh, little wings or veins in inside there. And they're going to turn. And that's what uh, gives the authority to the rotor to actually do something other than just kind of blow. So right? they're so changing they, their pitch as it rotates in the same way that a helicopter blade through its through its um, cyclic, no, it's collective, one of the two, changes the, the pitch of the helicopter rotor as it rotates. Is that is that what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Basically, each of those little veins in there has the ability to rotate or has the ability to go back and forth on its own. And then it's using those to control, basically. So this is... Mm -hmm. To be fair, this is the first flight they've done, I believe, where it's actually like going and kicking and, and going good. But they feel like um, this is just like the first time they've actually been able to kind of get it all together. But they feel like this is like right there where they're they're ready to go. And now that's going to be um, good to move forward with because this is kind of a proven technology. Not I don't mm -hmm. think with four rotors, um, it's been seen quite like this. But well, should we? Is there more information about the Cyclotech Cyclogyro Blunty, or where should we go next? Not too much. Um, they didn't give us too much information. There's only that one flight they've ever done, and it's just kind of marketing on their website mm -hmm. um, is, is the info they have on it. But I figured maybe we would take a look at uh, some of the previous Cyclogyro, Cyclorotor um, stuff and kind of see where it came from. So I figured mm -hmm. first we'd look real quick at like what we looked at previously on the news a couple months ago, um, which is the Cycloidal Rotor Drone. And this is the one that had the two Cycloidal Rotors on the back. Um, and then he basically built a servos um, and then a single propeller in the front for the stabilization. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is concept has been around for a long freaking time. Yes, yes, I have. I see. Um, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. So I figured I would kind of take a look back at like the modern uh, cycloidal rotor stuff we've done here. So um, there's this, but then this is more modern. But if we look at the next video, it'll be kind of the first one I was able to find. Um, and it's kind of just an article here, but it's the first one I was able wow. to find. Wow, I, you can really see it, can't you? At yes. the top, it is pitched up. At the bottom, it's pitched the opposite way, so it's pushing up. And then as it goes through the, the, the left and right, it's sort of neutral, so it produces no thrust there. That is something. Yeah, that just is to something. Be clear, guys, this is not using Magnus effect. Uh, this is a different effect. Uh, it's like mm -hmm. little rotors, like monitor it moves, so there's no Magnus effect. Yeah. Um, which of these do you want to look at? So, the next one? The yes, D Dallas? Yeah, the, the next one we'll take a look at real quick. I just thought this was cool because back in 2012, somebody was actually making drones uh, with these on them. So this is a little drone with four of these cycler rotors um, on it. I thought this was a pretty interesting little design. Yeah. Um, 2012. That was a long time ago. Yeah, and then next up, we can look at um, the world's smallest cyclocopter, which still, I believe, is the record for the smallest cyclocopter. It does the same idea, but they've kind of compacted everything together. 29 grams. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. Look at the props or the whatever you, the veins. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we get to see it fly? Yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, Woo! Now, this one's cheating a little bit because it's got a tail rotor for counter, counter torque. Yeah, so that's Some traditionally that how they've cheating. been how they've been done most of the time. I did I was able to find um, the next video here, which is a four cycler rotor vehicle, similar to the one we looked at mm -hmm. by Cyclotech. Um, yeah, that one there. But it's interesting because it's essentially they call it all terrain because they're actually driving on the ground with it too. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird. Yeah, I see how that could. If you're if you're on smooth ground, you could drive. I mean, if it was rough ground, you'd tear up the the veins. Yep, and but then, then they it like just can... basically set it, mm -hmm. and then yeah, fire it up, and then go straight up. Wow, 
I guess the question that comes to my mind, Blunty, is what are the advantages of this approach, which is mechanically quite complex? I mean, spinning something mechanical like that at thousands of RPM is uh, yeah. ample opportunity for something to break. Why not just use yes. props? So my understanding is it is better efficiency. The problem is that it's about control. You know, now now that it's, there's an issue with control over efficiency. Um, and then the other big issue is that um, it's... So you're essentially going to get way quieter um, because hmm. the, from what I was reading into it, essentially the way it creates the thrust um, doesn't have as much like air drag or whatever you would call it. And because of that, like you don't create the same frequency. And so the effect of the sound is very, is way like uh, way better for most cases. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, like you said, there's a bunch of moving parts and it's very easy for the drivetrains to break down. So that's what it seems like to me. Like the advantage for, of quadcopters is that we've got these outrunner motors, which are not the most durable things, but at the end of the day, you've just got a prop. There's nothing yeah. to break. Well, except the motor so, and the ESC. So but. let's look at our last link here. I just thought this was interesting because this is a concept I would have not considered without seeing it. Um, Pitch Arrow has a solution, which actually is pretty recent from the video they have down at the bottom here. But basically, they've created a normal inspection drone, but they're using the cyclorotor to stabilize that. So if you scroll down there, um, you can see in the, in the center of this thing, they've put a cyclorotor. Hmm. And so they're saying basically they can do super precision flight with a quad that's not really set up for super precision flight um, because the cyclorotor can keep them balanced. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So pretty cool Oh, because concept. the problem is that you've got the 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 tool or or payload or camera or whatever, the, the inspection device is sticking out the front. And so you've got a problem yeah. with balance and precision. You need to be able to get in there and like look at something. Yeah, and they talk about how typically with drones, that means you need like this exclusion zone where you're not allowed to fly X close to the thing. Yeah. And so this hopefully will allow them, and their testing has allowed them to get much closer than you mm -hmm. would expect. And, and what it looks like is that with the cyclo rotor on top, they can generate lateral thrust in any direction immediately right. without having to tilt the quadcopter. Well, it's not a quadcopter, it's a hex, but they can generate that lateral thrust without having to tilt, which means that there's no chance of like destabilizing it or accidentally tipping into something that's or pretty you slick a tool that can't that can't be adjusted like that yeah for sure yeah yeah so it's basically just like a sideways facing motor but the advantage is that it, you would need four sideways facing motors to generate lateral thrust in in all the sort of cardinal directions but with the cyclo rotor it can generate thrust in any direction in 360 degrees by changing where the veins are position to generate thrust, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee you this is RG Pilot. By the way, trade secret flight computer was I guarantee you it's RG Pilot. <laughs> it's just a custom build of, of Pixhawk RG Pilot. Guarantee. Oh I would bet I would bet a hundred dollars that that's RG Pilot. Quick <laughs> yeah. flash points out. Yeah. Quick flash points out the linchpin could do that too. <laughs> that's true. It has a lot of, it has more motors to be fair, but um, that is true. Very slick. Um, good to see you here, Quick Flash. Hope you're having fun with that project, working with, uh, working with uh, Terrence Howard. And uh, hope that's, I, I'm ex I, we haven't heard a lot about it since the contest was finished. I'm sure they've been busy though. 